So when you enable this option route error to error view, you will get an additional view enabled where you can capture those errors and you can continue the pipeline from here onwards. Something like writing that error into a, a common error file or a table, etc. So this is what you can do if you want to enable error handling at every snap level. So you just go to every snap and enable errors and all these can be written into a common file something like you take a union somewhere keep it unconnected though So this is how you can basically build your pipeline. So wherever that is applicable, you just enable your error views and then create a uh, catch component, something like try catch segment. So these are also are like try segments and these catch segment. Based on how many number of error views that you have enabled across your pipeline you can take a common maybe something like a union it need not to be union always just based on how you wanted to handle it here i just want to have a common uh, right component for all of this so i'm just using union and then writing into an error log and so on Let's see if I have, uh, I can This is reading from SQL, right?
We'll try to fail or of this snap, maybe at runtime. So in pipeline level, I think we have written. Okay, I'll write. Maybe. Okay, I'm reading from employee table, right? Certainly now it's not failing. See, how do we fail it? I'll do one thing. Okay, so now you can observe here, my expressions failed here, 
and uh, it's going into error view, right? So whatever the error that it actually captures, you can see what's error and all. So it says that the function doesn't actually apply on the type of data that we are passing into it. So that's what it says. And this data is what captured into here and then eventually will write into error log. Even if I run this, so your error log will be written there. So here is the log that we just generated. Now this is one way of handling it. If you have a very complex pipeline and uh, let's say it's about 30, 40 snaps that it's going to contain and so on. Doing this particular approach may not be feasible. You can't go enable error view for all the snaps across your pipeline and then go setting up a catch component like this and then write it. Instead, what you can do is you can enable error logging or you can enable this catch kind of setup for the entire pipeline itself right so if you can just go back to snap line uh, uh, pipeline properties earlier we were using this parameter section this was used to parameterize the pipelines where you can declare the required parameters and pass the values etc now we're gonna look at this particular section called error pipeline for us to select a pipeline as an error pipeline first we have to configure that particular pipeline to be uh, acting as an error pipeline if you just go randomly select a pipeline and try to save it it will not allow it see it says that this will change the default behavior okay and then If you go to your snaps, see first of all, it is not allowing me to use that particular pipeline as an error pipeline, right? It says the pipeline that we have chosen is not meeting the minimum requirements to be an error pipeline. What is the minimum requirement? The pipeline must have a single unlinked document input view, right? That means it needs to have at least one input view as an unconnected input view, right? It should not have any physical uh, inputs. So let's first design a pipeline to meet that particular criteria. And then we'll come and enable that particular error logging for one of the pipelines. So firstly, let's create A pipeline something called catch error you can give any name though so i'll use a mapper to be my unconnected input view right i'll simply write to formatter and then write.
movie can I can I will So I'm using one of these arguments basically gives us what's my parent and user ID and so on. And then I'll concatenate with a hyphen and then my concatenate with d dot now. Right. And then I'll concatenate with this one. Basically generating a dynamic file name with my parent run user ID and then timestamp when, when it is going to generate. So at the mapper level, what all I'm going to capture? Let's keep it simple. I'll just use pass through null safe access and then I'll generate an uh, 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 Timestamp when it is under date or not. Okay, that 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 keeps it simple. Otherwise, later you can just cut it down to the only elements that you wanted to read. How do I mean by that is? If you go to error view and expand your JSON, so basically you see these are all the elements that you'll be having as part of your error message. You have an error element, you have a reason element, you have a resolution element. If you do not want to read this entire response, entire error response, you can just pick and choose and use those stacks in that particular mapper that whatever that I've created. And then you will be able to read only that particular segment of your error. Otherwise, if you want to just keep it uh, entire thing that to be logged, I'm just using saying that pass, that means whatever that input comes in, just pass it entirely. And I'm just adding one additional tag saying that run date and so on. Okay. Now this is created without a physical input or at least with a unconnected input view, right? Unconnected input view. So that this can be enabled as part of my any other pipeline as a error block. So let's go to any. Okay, let's say I have here it please. And then I'll try to write something here. Now, uh, otherwise, we'll go here only. I'll enable, we'll eventually disable these error views. First, let me map my error pipeline to the pipeline properties itself. So, I'll come and enable catch error, save.
Okay, I'll disable this part. And I'll go here, say, now you see, we'll see a new option saying that route to error pipeline. Earlier, we haven't had this option. Earlier, the option was discard route to error view, right? And you don't handle this at all. So now I'll say route to error view. Here also, I'll say, in case of error, route to error pipeline. Okay, so now you can see the red color preview. So this basically says it is going to send that particular error to error, error, error pipeline. So now let me run this. I'll also mm -hmm. enable dashboard just to monitor whether that error pipeline will be running as a sub pipeline as part of this. We have actually mapped the pipeline top pipeline level. Yes, you need to go to pipeline properties. Yeah. Pipeline. Actually, we have mentioned this pipeline properties. Do we need to map uh, level also? You need to change because earlier I uh, manually changed this to error view, right? So I'm reverting oh. that. Otherwise, if you go to other apps, Mm. You'll see that option will be automatically set. Automatically enabled. Right? So here it is. I'll run this. So this is done. Now this was the last run execution. My pipeline ran and the underlying error pipeline also ran, right? So we can even go to my log. And this is a log that got generated. I'm not sure why timestamp has not been generated. Let's see what's wrong. Did not got saved. The latest version is having all the bugs. Okay, so now you can see the timestamp is generated and the corresponding log will be there inside. So this is the two ways of capturing the logs. In the current example, I'm just writing it to some log file, but it need not to be this way if you want to handle it at pipeline level itself. You can write all your acceptance handling there. Say something like based on your error message, you may want to route it to a different segment or a different table, etc., and so on. And uh, as I was mentioning, as part of the error message, you have multiple elements like reason, error message, and uh, resolution, and all that. So you may want to capture only those tags here. So whatever that is that you wanted to do, uh, a little customization in terms of handling those errors yes you can pretty much do that either at 
if you are doing that at pipeline you can do that at pipeline level or if you are enabling that in the main pipeline itself you can also do that as well so uh, that's pretty much about the error handling what we have at uh, staff logic level and how do you handle that and so on and while you do this if you wanted to send any parameterized values also to your error pipeline so this is what we can do right so error pipeline parameters means first the parameters has to be declared at your patch error right that is your error pipeline and to those values is what we can basically send whatever that you wanted to send here so so that's about it suppose like my file has many columns huh? all the columns file are null there are now some null records in the file yeah this null this is how you handle it that's a fact so this are tried it sir it's not working uh, this is missing uh, so i could not uh, get rid of them is it a null value or null string there is a difference not string only if it is n u l l that oh, is yeah. string no data in the, the i created excel file there are like a few blank columns blank so when i just uh, uh, read it out uh, then uh, there are like few null uh, null records blank records there was no data in that the entire record or only one or two entire record, entire record was like null yeah the record means that then that will not be read at all right no it was it showing can, uh, can, uh, just preview the data, can, the data. like uh, no data was there in the row but there are like uh, 10 rows when the data was there the records, 10 records inputted no you can actually prevent that that uh, you can just filter it out if you want to or do not want to process your empty records and so on. It can be either at your parcel format somewhere it is. You see here, ignore mm -hmm. empty data. So if it is enabled, it should ignore that record. So you can handle mm -hmm. that using default options. So. Okay, so that's I've used this Excel parser. I didn't find it. Excel also, I believe there must be. See here, insert null column. Uh, it was something different, right? Otherwise, if you are still getting, that means it is not null cell. They are empty cells. There is a difference. Empty cells means there must be some empty string already present in that one. I mean, nothing was there. Uh, so I just tried. If I can write something by like uh, conditions in the, in the mapper, if conditions. Mapper doesn't there. filter out records. Uh, so you have to use filter snap if you wanted to filter rows. Oh, filter snap. Yeah. yeah. There's something called uh, conditional condition snap. I could see something. No, conditional is your if fills. Uh, so you still need to write you'll 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 be getting a result as true or false it doesn't filter records as such conditional uh -huh. will simply say whether your record is meeting the condition or not so it's not filtered you wanted to filter records you have to use filter snap okay uh, because i thought i'll write a condition 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 and uh, just leave can get a source no, oh, it was not the allowed. Condition you can directly write in filter snap itself. So whatever the rows that meet the condition will come. Otherwise, they get discarded. Okay. Yeah. No, we are defining static values uh, for the pipeline parameters, right? Correct. So can we um, get those values from the database table or something? Uh, oh, in that case, you just have to take your source file or a table whatever that is okay and then you need to call the sub pipeline where you have declared your this one we need to go in order to understand we need to look at this one only this uh, list one where it is. Okay. 
Yeah, this one. So this will be your table, whatever that source it is. Okay. And this will be your actual pipeline in which you have declared your parameters. Mm -hmm. Right. And that you will be calling through pipeline execute. This is your table where you have declared your parameters in table. Mm -hmm. And the actual pipeline is being called as a sub pipeline. Now what you do? Sub pipeline. These are the parameter names of your sub pipeline that you will declare. Okay. And your incoming is your columns of your database. Okay. So that's how you can dynamically pass the DB values or whatever the physical data object that you're reading from. It may it may be DB or a file, etc. That's okay. one way out. There is another thing that we'll be looking at maybe tomorrow. There is something called external parameter file. It is applicable only with respect to files, not with tables. Okay. We we config we call them as config files, wherein you can declare parameters in a JSON formatted config file. And this JSON formatted config file can be mapped here as part of your expression libraries. Okay. As part of your edit pipeline properties. And there is a syntax to call that external parameter from your file. Mm -hmm. So in that case, you don't even have to declare any local parameters at your pipeline level. Yeah. You can directly call them. You just have to map the file and whatever the parameters that are declared in the file, you can directly call them as part of your pipeline anyway. You just have to mention that particular element. Okay. So I'll prepare a file by tomorrow session and then we'll see how do we map it and how do we call it and all. we just have to follow certain syntax as well this is applicable only with respect to the file but if you have them in database level yes this is the method that we just talked about you just have to use that physical sql table whatever it is and call your actual pipeline as a sub pipeline using pipeline execute and then map your incoming db columns to the corresponding parameters of your file. Okay. So, any other questions for the day? No, not a sense, sir. Just get to know any. Uh, no problem. Thank you.